Arkadaşlar merhaba. Hello everyone. Bu toplantı da olmak ve bu konuşmayı To be yapmak, in this meeting and yani to have such an opportunity yani for us making a speech is a great pleasure for me. And I uh, attach great importance to these kinds of meetings. As I uh, said to Mr. Witten, the information that I have is usually accumulated through these kinds of uh, conferences. In 70s and 80s in Germany, uh, there used to be lots of meetings, and I used to never miss any of them. Because in those times, always the experts and specialists, SMC and BMC were all new concepts those times then. So about these topics, there were uh, lots of very interesting presentations. Another important characteristic of these kinds of conferences is to have a, an opportunity to come together with very uh, knowledgeable people. I met with Mr. Professor uh, Gordon in one of those conferences. He is almost the father of SMC and BMC. His group, for the first time, uh, polyester and magnesium oxide uh, being a compound. And he also, also discovered that this was possible for uh, a commercial use. And later on, uh, some other people started to work as a continuation of his study. And they trans they com uh, tran uh, converted this to SMC and later on to BMC, and these reached up to today's situation. Now, that is why we're going to be talking about the faults of SMC and BMC, and we're going to try to understand the first reason of SMC and BMC. Uh, the first thing about this is the problem of the mixture. For instance, you take the uh, material combined with the glass fiber, and then the material that comes out is pressed. And during this process, uh, in a high viscosity, it has to be very concentrated and it has to uh, make a noise when you knock on it. However, it's on, however on the other hand, uh, to have a high viscosity means uh, the wetting of the material within this mold. Therefore, the viscosity at the beginning has to be very low at the beginning. So these two uh, maturization, maturation is the most important fact. So polyester uh, filling and uh, the polyester is not only necessary uh, to carry out a process. In the maturation uh, process, you end up with a new product, which is homogeneous all around. Therefore, I uh, feel like, I think it's like marriage, you know. A woman and a man, when they come together, Right after the wedding, they do not uh, come, they do not end up as a couple. Being a couple requires some time. Within time, they're going to be a family, or sometimes they fail to be a family, of course, but uh, this is the normal process. SMC and BMC, as we understand today, in terms of it is uh, used in Turkey, is very weak. Because as you know, in Western countries, uh, this SMC and BMC is the major part of the whole uh, processes in Europe. But it has a very low share still in Turkey. Why? Because of the failures and defects of SMC and uh, BMC. Because uh, still today, we haven't yet 
reach to a proper uh, production of SMC and BMC in Turkey because we haven't yet fully understand the essentials of SMC and BMC in Turkey. That's why I've chosen to talk about this topic because I'd like to uh, shared information about how to overcome these defects and only by then we're going to be able to of course uh, use SMC and BMC to the desired level in Turkey and I have to say that uh, it is 100 tons 100,000 tons in Turkey it has to be used as 100 tons in Turkey however it's only used as 12,000 tons so far in Turkey uh, the Western countries already managed to use it as much as it is required but today we haven't reached that level yet there are certain advantages of SMC and BMC why it has been so much developed in Europe or in Western countries or uh, why it's been so much used now the reasons is about the advantages of the filling the material is cheap first of all 100% of the material comes from uh, common materials so uh, so a very qualified material is obtained with a very cheap price and as for the second it's about the production speed uh, there is no technology, almost no technology in thermoset industry uh, that uh, functions and operates so quick as uh, SMC and BMC. For instance, we used to produce uh, the uh, flaps for uh, Mercedes, uh, so they were all ready in two minutes. In Western countries, in, in automobile industry, the large uh, bumpers are produced in one and a half minutes so you produce 1000 units per day there is no other so speedy production another important topic is construction richness so uh, with some other materials maybe you have to take some uh, a couple of steps in order to produce a certain product by co combining certain uh, but in this case you can only combine a kind of uh, several materials and you can do it only at one step uh, for instance in automotive a big part is included into the engine and then the units are all uh, located in this engine for instance easily and also uh, inflammability is quite important as well uh, so you're able to reach to an inflammability in every level uh, for instance if you work in the electricity industry then again from our example we've created a spare part for automobile it was a spare part in order to uh, set uh, exterminate the fire another one is about the control of the uh, uh, pulling as you know it's one of the most important problems this is the case in most of the in Bekalite or in melamine this is usually the case and in addition to this uh, there may be some uh, problems in terms of practicing as well and you you may sometimes come across with the situation therefore Within time, uh, it may shrink to a certain extent. In SMC and BMC, you can make it zero if you like. Or the part can be even bigger than the mold. However, uh, the mold, if you would like mold to shrink to construct according to construction, then you can control it as much as you like. 
in addition to this, there are advantages coming with enforcement. I don't need to tell about this, for instance, with use of steel. Uh, even at the uh, level of the steel, it's possible to go for SMC and BMC. Uh, colorful and smooth surface, as it's been already said. Uh, the the part can be produced in different colors. You don't need to paint it afterwards. You can have a very bright and smooth surface. And again, when you want resistance to the external factors, especially with steel and aluminum, the corrosion, or the same applies to wood or uh, some other materials. But in SMC, with SMC, I remember that the German post mail uh, service went for bidding for the post boxes and uh, the specification was to make them durable at least for five years. However, the final product lasted for 25 years. So this is the case. Uh, weight, lightness in weight uh, or reduced weight is also very important. So if you can manage to produce it as much as, produce it resistant as much as you like, and if you can make it as light as you desire, then it's a full performance. Uh, and of course, uh, conduction is another important issue for electricity. Uh, pro related uh, business, for instance. If you like, you can produce parts here as the material itself can be conductive. The same thing is about insulation. Uh, you can have a perfect uh, thermal insulation or sound insulation as well. I've talked about this today with a friend. Uh, for macroeconomy, uh, there is an advantage. In total, one gram of SMC production is almost or approximately one tenth of steel production in terms of consumption of energy. So if you think about this, I mean, if we produce everything in Turkey by SMC, then the energy need of Turkey is going to be reduced by one, th uh, by one third. Because, you know, uh, this is mainly used in uh, very, uh, various subjects for classic type of materials as well. So you need a high level of energy. So knowing this, uh, I think uh, we have a great advantage. In addition to this, uh, we have to still see the other side of the coin. It also has some disadvantages. We have to know about this as well. So firstly, it's about the uh, production sensitivity. This is all very important, a material. Uh, in order to be produced in the most qualified manner, you have to work very precisely and sensitively. And we are going to talk about this later on. This requires a deep attention to the topics we're going to be discussing today. And the second problem is about homogeneity. When we talk about the classic uh, materials, the uh, material is same all around, but in SMC and BMC, it's a bit problematic, uh, as it's a bit uh, complicated mixture with 10 components to uh, produce them in the most homogeneous way is not very easy. Uh, in addition to this, the cost comes from the mold production. Because if you're going to make it from steel, uh, you have to make it from steel, and it has to be very much qualified, and the cost is a little bit high in this regard. Uh, for instance, uh, this isn't higher in terms of price from the plastic molds, but RTM, if you compare it with RTM or hand molds, then it's cheap, uh, expensive, more expensive. But still, uh, with the cost of the mold, in total, every part ends up being cheaper in cost. Uh, 
Because when you make a calculation, when you sum them up, 50% of the total comes from filling materials. This isn't the case for RTM or in other uh, processes. And also the f surface problems. You may have to deal with the surface problems. Now let's talk about the uh, common problems firstly. It's more about the color fluctuation. Sometimes there may be matte and bright uh, regions, uh, partly damaged surface, holes on the surface. Uh, there may be some unfilled parts. Uh, there may be some gaps and uh, black, black spots. There may be dimension, defo dimension deformations, which means the size may uh, be a little bit problematic. There may be uh, certain cracks or uh, delamination can also be seen. Uh, the total part can be broken. There may be differences of color, differences of thickness or mechanical weakness, inflammability problem, and weight problems. Well, of course, there are other things as well, but these are the most common ones. Now, for instance, as an example, to uh, overcome the problem of trash is not to produce any trash. So instead of dealing with problems, we have to take the actions right from the beginning so that no problem will occur. And I think this would be much more uh, result-oriented, effective method. But as it's not possible to produce trash, it's not possible to work without any problems. So if we're aware of the situation, I think we can uh, overcome this problem in the most efficient way. The major reasons are usually because of the uh, structure. And the second one comes from the pressing issues. A large group of people would think that it's usually because of the raw material. So to blame the raw material is a common approach. However, uh, based on my 40 years of experience, I can honestly say that a large part of the problem comes from pressing defects. But we still have to focus on both of the issues, if you allow me. When you get older, uh, your mouth gets drier very frequently. Now, raw material defects. This is a major problem. Formulation imbalances, peroxides, fillings, or other additives, uh, or fibers. So ten, more than ten compounds comes together, and for each and every component, uh, have five or six, eight, let's say, different types. To, even though you select the right components, still there may be differences among parties, lots. If a new polyester lot that comes to you is not in compliance with the standard, and if you haven't checked it, then the material that you're going to produce is going to be different. Each and every lot you've been delivered will be, a will be the reason of a different product at the end. The formulation instabilities is another issue. There are thousands of SMC-BMC formulations because based on where it's going to be used, you have to use a different formulation. So it requires, a very, for instance, at some point you require very high mechanical uh, resistance or at one point you require a full uh, dimensional uh, compliance. You uh, produce large or small parts. Uh, 
So, in addition to a large, very large part, you produce a very detailed small part as well. So, for each and every production, you need to use a formula. And if these formulations are not right, then uh, they're not going to be uh, in harmony. Well, of course, one of the largest defects comes from the defect in uh, production. You have the right formulation, but you don't end up with the right product you're looking for, because uh, during SMC process, you make some mistakes. The first one comes from weighing. Firstly, the weight measure that you're going to use is quite important. This may seem to be very simple, but I've noticed that this is one of the most common mistakes. For instance, you weigh something, but uh, still uh, you don't end up with the right material. So you have to have a standard weight every day, and you have to check it everything on based on it. Is it 100 kilograms, or is it 50 grams, or is it something milligrams? So then you have to start weigh, weighing the others. He, you, he takes three different measures in order to end up with the same product, and it never uh, ends up with success, of course. But of course, there are human errors. Because you work with large masses, uh, and you combine large masses with very small things. Uh, for instance, uh, 100 milligrams. A very small mistake in 100 milligrams in a very sensitive material is going to bring you a big problem. So the mixture mistakes, mixture failures is another important issue. As you know, in a compound, in a unit, you're just mixing it. The diameter of the uh, unit, the diameter of the mixer, and the speed of the mixer is all very important. So the the uh, height of this mixture has to be uh, at a certain level. And if these do not go properly, then you're going to end up with a problem. And then at the end of the unit, you have to have a circular platform. Usually the people uh, try to make a mixture in a barrel and it never works fully. You end up with totally something different. The order of the components the uh, duration of the mixture and the uh, temperature of the mixture is quite important. Temperature is very important because when you mix it, it already gets heated. And this has to be somewhere between 28 to 30 uh, Celsius degrees. Should never be above or below these degrees. If it is below, the viscosity is going to be very high and it's not going to be mixed up properly because uh, it, it, therefore it's going to be a failure. But if it's above, then magnesium oxide is going to be reacted very uh, quickly and then you're going to come up with deviation problems. Now let's talk about the SMC and BMC machinery uh, faults. The form of the body, the distance between the body and the wings, and the duration of mixture, mixing, is very important. If you mix it for a very long time, you're going to uh, damage the fiber. But if you do it uh, less than required, then it's not going to be functional as well. Speaking about SMC machine, the uh, speed of the rolls, uh, the fiber movement, and the chopping mo uh, speed, the uh, chopping type, the uh, pull factor of the film are some of the parameters, so these all have to be right. And then uh, you may end up with uh, stocking uh, failures. 
First of all, you have to keep it in a uh, pack where stern is not going to be uh, flying away. So you have to uh, stalk it accordingly. And of course, you have to be very careful about the uh, temperature, 20, 22 or 24 degrees is enough uh, to keep them uh, there uh, for staking for two weeks, let's say. Now let's talk about pressing um, failures. To speak about the pressing uh, failures, uh, you may have some problems with the mold. The construction may be in the wrong position. The design of the construction, um, I've made a speech about this because I think it's a very important topic. Uh, minimum 10 or ten, uh, 15 criteria are applicable for construction. If you do not uh, fully apply these, you may end up with uh, many problems. And then the mold may not work properly. Another important uh, issue is about the um, gaps. Together with the um, temperature, it goes with a speed of 140 kilometers. Now, if you come across with a serious problem in terms of peak, generally, you are going to be able to see this on the produced part. There was a meeting of Siemens once. You will know that Siemens is almost the largest uh, part uh, producer in Turkey. They have many problems. And they asked me to do a speech like this one. And I asked them to bring me the parts which were all problematic. And based on those parts, I've gave them information about what uh, failure and what mistake was there. And I had to chance to say that this part, for instance, between uh, point A and point B, there is a 10 degrees of a difference. And then they checked it out from the mold and they found the same thing. So it's easy to see it. You can see where the uh, problem occurred, where the reason of the problem is. Another one is about press uh, defaults. For instance, the uh, tables may not be parallel, or it may be about the speed speed um, adjustment. In order to use SMC properly, you have to have a proper uh, speed graphic. It may go down in a very fast fashion, and then it may slow down, but then it may close it with, again, speedy fashion. But right at the beginning, it's usually very slow, and then gets accelerated. So this has to be the graphic. So you have to be very careful about it. Another one may be about pressure, pressure problem. So the uh, press may not be in a position to apply the same pressure all around. Now, we've already completed our time, but if you like, I can talk about the major mistakes as well. But if you like, you can ask the questions which you think are important whichever you prefer. Then I'd like to shortly tell about these major mistakes for 10 minutes. Uh, as I said, uh, there may be uh, math and bright uh, areas on the sur surface. This may be because of the instability of the form formula, uh, maybe the differences between UP and LP. 
or the mixture may be wrong, as we've talked, or it can be about the raw material uh, mistake. Again, press and mold uh, mistakes or failures can occur. This is something quite common. To a large extent, of course, the major part of the vast majority of the uh, failures comes from this uh, uh, the differences of uh, temperature. The principle is as follows. On the mold, uh, in between two points, the thermal difference should never be more than three degrees. And the easiest uh, practice in this regard is to uh, heat it with vapor. So when you heat it up with electricity, you always end up with these problems. Again, in this kind of a temperature, whichever uh, uh, the surface you would like to have bright has to be 10 degrees uh, more heated than the other part because the uh, heated part is usually more homogeneous and more bright. You usually see a matte area and then you uh, look at the other side and you see it's more bright in the same region on the other side. So if you if you use the same temperature, a low, high temperature all around, then you're going to end up with a bright surface. In principle, there is something called positive pressure. So, so it depends on where the bright side is. If you'd like to have a bright uh, part, then it will be good to keep it at the lower part. Any other questions? Uh, differences of color or fluctuations in color. This is also another problem. If the bright part is on the female side, then uh, where will be the gas uh, discharge from the part? Well, for gas discharge, there is a specific system. Uh, the first thing is about the uh, pushers, as you know, they're all usually underneath. So the gas will be discharged from the pushers, because otherwise you're going to end up with problems, on the other hand. Let's say you haven't uh, managed to sort that out, then uh, you're going to uh, leave a gap next to the parts in a very, uh, very line, uh, thin line. And then there is going to be a opposite uh, surface there, but still uh, you're going to clean the bird there. Uh, well, for gas discharge, there are uh, some other ways as well. For instance, you can use air pusher. So the air will push the pusher. The gas comes out, and as it, uh, and then it comes back to its own uh, location. Or, as I said, to the end points, you can use gaps uh, in the form of pins and the uh, air can be accumulated there. I'll be talking about this later on. Any other questions? Uh, in terms of color uh, differences, it's usually about the uh, selection of the pigments. 
So the differences of temperature may end up with different colors. And then there is the formula failure. If it's a low profile system, you cannot make it colored. If you try, it will never end up with a good result. There are surfaces that are uh, not working from one place to the other, and that uh, might end up with a glass fiber look. Glass fiber might not get wet uh, decently, and then there will be an irregularity, or there might be surface uh, discrepancy, discrepancies in the mold. In the mold, sometimes there are some porosities and these will cause problems. And then there are heat failures. Next point is pores on the surface. Sometimes you see on the surface some holes. The most frequently seen problem here is the mold separator problem. Sometimes there are uh, lumps. It's not finely diffused, so it causes these holes in the surface. The same might be true for uh, the filling. The filling might not have been mixed up well, which is why we have to be extremely careful. Moisture will disrupt the entire uh, system. The calcite will have lumps in it. And no matter how much you try to mix it up, the lumps will remain and then they will uh, burst on the surface. And uh, you can see the same in low profile additives. And if the material is very reactive, you see the same result. If the material is not moving well, sometimes on the road, some spots will be cooking. And since those spots are not under pressure, it will look like a sponge in the end. Holes on the edges and on the rims, on, in the corners. Sometimes the entire part is okay, but there are some emptinesses uh, towards the edges. And then uh, there might be black spots here and there. Here, the pressure might be low, and uh, the material might not be pressed up uh, until the end point. Sometimes the material is reactive, it cannot go all the way to the edge, it freezes on the way. Sometimes the heat is too high, when this sort of a problem arises, if you lower the heat, you might solve this problem then the material is going to travel all the way until the end. And sometimes the, water, the air is not able to move out and it will get stuck and uh, we need to find a solution to air being stuck. In these cases, uh, these spots with uh, trapped air will require some uh, tri uh, some, uh, emptinesses. All the air is going to accumulate there and then you can uh, polish it and you can solve the problem. The black spots uh, in the corners, well, apart from the factors you see above, another point uh, has to do with the maturation. If the material is not mature enough, then organic and unorganic substances are going to be uh, moving away from one another. Organic uh, materials are going to flow faster and they will have steam coming out of them. The steam is going to accumulate in the corner points. They will be uh, squeezed up together and they will burn and they will cause those black spots, which is why you will need the material to be further uh, Matur uh, uh, maturated. You will put the material together under 25, 30 degrees, you will keep it waiting there and then you won't have these problems anymore. And then there is another factor which is imbalance formula which happens all the time. Uh, distortions, uh, changes in the dimensions, what is the reason for these? 
Well, if the cooking process is not long enough, if the period is too short, that might cause it. If the material is taken out without uh, the uh, cooking taking place all the way until the end, then polymerization has not been uh, complete. So uh, the reaction is going to keep continuing and there will be bends and distortions, which is why if something of this sort happens, you need to further elongate the uh, time, the period of time, and then you can overcome this problem. Another issue uh, might have to do with uh, how a tensile uh, the uh, material is, is. If it's around 1% or if it's a really high degree of um, tensility then there will be distortions no matter what you do so you need to go and look back at the material again sometimes there might be problems with the mold these might also end up in distortions do you have any questions until here a very frequently seen problem is adhesions on the surface there might be many many molds which uh, became scrap in the air, and sometimes the press doesn't open, sometimes part of it is above and part of it is below. All sorts of things that you can imagine can happen. So what are the reasons for this? Well, number one reason is new mold. A new mold will always end up with adhesions. So this is something that one should always be very careful about. In a new mold, number one, A, you need to use an external mold remover and uh, secondly you need to make sure that the material is uh, the en filling the entire mold earliest at the fifth time. So first you need to put one third of the material and press it and then you put a little more and then a bit more until it's halfway through and then a bit more and finally you will put 90% of it in there and 95% and this will make sure that the surface of the mold is nicely finished. So uh, this will make sure that the 8th, 9th, 10th uh, parts are perfect. If you are not patient, you are going to pay a lot of money for the molds. Another subject is whether the heat is too high or too low. If these are the cases, uh, there might be an adhesion problem. Then the mold uh, remover is not going to work well or else it's going to flow away and it's going to stick again. So there are problems about heating and then there is the dough problem, especially when the separator is mixing, sometimes it doesn't mix up well enough and there are smaller amounts in certain points and then they will adhere. Uh, capillary cracks. Uh, the main reason for these is differences in thickness. Sometimes a part is very thick and then next to it is a fine uh, part and then there will be a crack. You have to be careful with that. If the heat is too high, it will crack and if the reactivity of the dough is very high, it will crack. Another point is there will always be cracks in the orientation lines. What does this mean? As I tried to discuss earlier, the burr uh, areas, if they are not equal everywhere, if there are more of them in certain points, the uh, material is going to move in that direction. And then the fibers are going to be parallel to one another. But the idea was to make sure that the fibers would be following different paths everywhere. When there is an orientation, then the bonds in between will be weak and there will definitely be a crack. Even if you don't see it, there is a crack there and the first time there is an impact, it's going to crack, it's going to break. A very common thing we see is uh, separations layer by layer. Uh, so you touch it and you see that the tears are separated from one another. This might have to do with improper, inefficient, insufficient pressure 
If there is not enough pressure in the press, then this is going to be the result. If the dough is too dry or if the heat is too high, it will cause the same problem because uh, there will be a reaction as soon as there is a contact. There is a lack of bond between the two because this was in reaction and the other part was not in reaction. And then we have SMC, one layer on top of the other, and between the layers of dif between the different layers of SMC, the bonding will be small because there is too much maturation in the material, so it's not going to stick together. Differences in thickness. This might have to do with the failure of the mold. It might also have to do with the bonding. We do it differently, which is why frequently you need to measure the thicknesses of parts. And if there are certain problems that took place over time, you will see that. And if there are problems regarding creeping, that might also have to do with the uh, thickness differences. I'm moving fast because I don't want to take too much of your time. Mechanical deficiencies. You look at the substance, uh, the material, and you see that it doesn't have the uh, properties that you want. It might have to do with the fiber, the uh, pre uh, parameters of the uh, pressing. These are the common ones. And then there might be problems about uh, weight, about uh, black spots on the surface, fluctuations. Uh, the blackness will have to do with well, the substance. The substance is uh, glass fiber. As you know, it's harder than steel. It's more stiff than steel. It's going to scratch the surface of the mold as it moves. Some metal is going to be removed from the mold. It's, of course, a very thin uh, substance, and it's going to be on the material. You're going to see it black. Uh, in the fluctuations, if as the... Uh, if the reactivity is not arranged, considering the movement of the material, the material is going to go hit the wall and return until it is cooked. And these uh, fluctuations are going to cause this effect. The part might smell. You might find out that there is a smell on the part. This means that it's not cooked. And another problem might be incombustibility. There was a company called Menzorit, uh, if you remember. It was the biggest in the world once upon a time. I went to their pressing house, and there were hundreds of presses. And there was a big press there on top of it. But there were at least 10 people gathered looking at something. I went there to see what it was about. There was a huge part. It was a body part and each part that they got was breaking and they were trying to find out what the problem was. I went there and I smelled it. I checked this, uh, the part, it smelled. The material was not cooked. I told the master there, this is not cooked. I said it's either uh, the heat, the heat must be increased or the period must be longer. And they said, okay, we will make it a longer period. They did it in instantly and then they pressed again and it was a good part. And then they pressed again and it was a good part. It's as simple as that actually. Another thing is, again, to find out whether the part is cooked or not, you need to uh, tap on it like a doctor does. You take a mechanical part and you teach, touch each point. And there is a sound you need to get. A cooked uh, part, a well-cooked part, will have a tough uh, noise. If it's not cooked enough, it's going to be a thicker noise, if you know what I mean. And you will be able to tell instantly there which parts, which spots are cooked and which spots are undercooked. And if there are undercooked parts, then uh, you are going to end up with problems, definitely, for sure. After covering all of these, uh, we need to talk about injection failures. As you know, SMC, uh, PMC has a high degree of injection involved. 
Here the speed uh, of the screw, the uh, pre and uh, post pressure uh, settings, homogeneity of pressure and um, quantity might be areas where you can have problems. Thank you very much for your attention. Do you have any questions? In a painted SMC part, if you're having gas problems, maybe tempering might help before painting. Is that so? Yes. But better than that is to wash it with acetone. Or, or you can heat it up with flames. Yes, with flames. Is that for the conductivity of the surface? Uh, on the surface of the material, there are very small uh, pores that you cannot see, and there might be air there. When you heat it up, the air will be removed, so you will be able to yeah, just use some flame to move over it to heat it up. But a better, there is immolt coated, as uh, it is called. It's even better. You press it, you lift it up a little bit, and then you uh, inject the paint and you press again. And then, since there's pressure, those small spots will also be filled with paint, so there won't be uh, air moving out later. Might this have to do with uh, paste? Yes. During the pressing, the most important thing is the way the paste is placed, because there are some masters that only place that uh, paste, because uh, that's the best way. The easiest way to solve this is uh, to do it by color, with two colors. So two different colors being pressed on the material. There you can see how the material is moving inside. So you will be able to tell how uh, you're supposed to place it. It will give you an idea. Thank you very much. Thank you.